boat literally just. Uh. Previously on Sailing Zatara. While island hopping in the South Pacific, Keith shared with you some of the reasons of his affections for his new high field dinghy. And we slowly adventured around the islands of the Tuamotos. We also sat down with another sailing family to see what drives them to make this incredible journey with their kids. To go and take your kids out of a perfect environment. There are stresses about, are you doing the right thing for your kids? Whatever you want in life, you must be hungry. If you're not hungry, you'll never be successful. We as a family, we are hungry. We're hungry to meet new cultures, meet new people. You know. It is very different living this boat life and I honestly have to say that it's a little bit of shock when you tell somebody we're buying a boat and we're going sailing around the world and they're like wow it's it's a good life it's a it's a happy life <laughs> I tell you a story about me and you out on the water surrounded by the blue they scream that only I'll be saved Just let it float away. Yeah, I'll let it float away. I'll let it float away. I'll let it float away. Float away. Float away. Yeah, I'll let it float away. After a snowboarding accident a decade ago left her paralyzed, this French woman refused to let her disability keep her from experiencing life. At first, it's the end of the world. I'm very angry uh, because I say, why me? After I said, I have two options. Uh, one, I stay on my bed and I cry every day. And the second, I, try, I continue to live and do a lot of singing and, uh, and so I chose we met Leah and her husband Steph here in Fakaraba South in the Tuamotos and watched in amazement as she kite surfed tandem with kite champion Adrian Cartier Mion, who's also the lead instructor here at the kite school. Leah is a passionate athlete and she and Steph are constantly finding or creating practical ways to adapt different activities to Leah's abilities. She can now do many adapted sports like scuba diving, tandem skiing, and tandem paragliding. And they're highly interested in finding other disabled athletes to share these adventures with. How's it going so far? For more information on participating in or sponsoring Leah's sporting events or to just chat with her, send her an email to leah.bernadette at ecomail.fr. And thanks to the Kite School for the incredible footage.
Levels coming on. He's doing three sixties now. He's getting really natural on the kayak. He's self rescues so he's like a thousand times better than me, and I'm like the best of the best. <laughs> the best of the worst. The best of the worst. <laughs> really? All right. feel about that babe great session best session ever yeah oh, awesome Just hours on the board you look good out there oh that redneck can do something Woo! Fakaraba is an atoll which is surrounded on all sides by coral reef with a pass on each end to enter and exit for a couple of weeks, we hung out here, mostly at the south, but at one point we made our way to Pakokota to get Wi-Fi for a few days while the weather was sour. Since we missed the morning shuttle, we decided to just take our dinghy the 10 miles up north to dump trash and get groceries. We just went 10 miles in about 25 minutes in our dinghy. Awesome. It's so good to be able to not have to take the big boat and go somewhere. Just to dump it's like trash. A minivan. It's like a minivan. Just to dump trash and get groceries because we missed the morning shuttle. <laughs> They don't have teeth. They don't. They're in their shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> so cute. They're so cute. Mozzies. Are they Australian mosquitoes? That's why they're called mozzies. <laughs> now that the storm is gone, the blow is gone, it's kind of died down, so we decided to do a little hiking and exploring here in Fakarava South. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the reef and shallow area that surrounds an atoll. And although it makes for good shell hunting and exploring and even neat videos. Oh, eyeballs. A big hermit crab. Yeah. 
It can also be a death trap for an unaware boater, as we found out when we pulled into the South Pass. Hey. Bakker Rava South Pass 2019. The Bakkers have arrived. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Hi. South Pass? <laughs> Oh yeah, they are. Yeah. Locals are. Yeah. This is the pass, the South Pass. Somebody's dream just went to crap. And these people apparently got up at 5 a.m. to leave and there was no sunlight. Why would they do that? They got stuck on the dive ball. Their prop got caught in the dive ball out here. They should have dropped their anchor as soon as they, they lost have, control. Yeah, the dive bay over here, there's plenty of room. They could have dropped their anchor, that'd have been safe. They're 25 feet of water right here. If they hit the ball, the mooring ball right here, and if they and, and the motor locked up, and then they tried to sail, that was a big mistake. What they should have done was drop their hook right here. Right here, yeah. If they dropped their hook, their boat would be safe. They, they were going out. They were going out. And the wind blew them that away. Yeah. The sun blew them that away, so they would have been getting beat up probably. Oh, yeah. But at least their hook would have set, and the boat would have been sitting here, not beating against the rocks. Yeah, I mean, it's just right there. I lost the rudder. I lost the... Those things are repairable. Well, yeah, if you can get your boat to a... But they shouldn't have gone out at 5 o'clock in the morning. Exactly. Oh, man. So, anyway, a sailboat, a 55-foot do four, brand new one six, seven months old, just crashed on the reef up here. And we're checking it out. We're gonna figure out what happened to these people and what bad decisions got them there. <laughs> the information we have is only hearsay, but our source is highly reliable and has also informed us that the boat owner is filing a lawsuit against whomever is responsible for placing the dive buoy in the path of the entrance to the pass. This is what a dive buoy typically looks like. Keith said the handful of buoys located in and near the South Pass were actually marked on Navionics because they'd been there for over a decade. They have now all been removed. The wreck was about four days prior and at this point the boat was officially declared abandoned and there were plenty of locals salvaging the remaining contents. The boat is to be cut in half and hauled to Tahiti for proper disposal. What a horrible accident. Even if the blame lies on the location of the dive buoy, we all should know the danger of setting sail in the dark, especially around reefs and islands. It's so important to have plenty of light, eyes on the bow, we've been told they had eight people on board, and strict emergency plans just in case something unexpected happens. But you know, sometimes things just happen. One mistake leads to another, and before you know it, you're in a detrimental situation. We're just so thankful that the family's okay, they had insurance, and no one got hurt. Hey guys, I'm so excited to dive here. The group responding was actually a few days ago, but the weather has been terrible, so here we are, the sun is out, the visibility should be great, so we're gonna drop in here in a couple hours and see some sharks and some rays and whatever else is going on down there. In the meantime, 
The last sailing family that we interviewed is Elysian. And what I find so interesting about all these families is there's a common theme, especially when it comes to why they took their kids sailing. But also when it comes to their future plans, it seems that none of them want to go back on land. And so they really don't know what the future holds. So they just leave room for adventure. So this Australian couple has four of their children on board ages 10 to 20. And they have Emily, who's 16 and has Down syndrome. And we discuss what it's like to sail with a child with special needs. So if you would, take the next five minutes and listen to their story. Hey guys, uh, we're the Burns family and we're uh, sailing on Elysian, which is a 44 foot lagoon catamaran. We've been on here since November 2017. We were living in uh, northern New South Wales and our house was in, 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 in Sydney. The opportunity came about to sell a house and it wasn't with the intention actually to buy a boat. We just decided you know, to sell up and, and, and consolidate everything and then Rachel mentioned that we you know we'd always had the dream of sailing or having a boat and here was the opportunity so you had the dream, I had the dream. <laughs> yeah. but for me the goal was just to take them out of their little bubble mm -hmm. of home and you know their their connections and just show them there is that there's a bigger a bigger world out there and there's some wonderful places back at home kids slot into groups um, and they might be groups, you know, around the interests that they have or, um, you know, the look that they have or who their parents are friends with and, and their age. And on, on a boat, you don't have any of that. It's like kids will see other kids mm -hmm. and they'll just go and play. I want my kids to grow up and be, um, you know, accepting and not... And not um, you know, be judging people, saying I don't want to hang out with this one because of this, you know, give, I want them to give everyone a go. I think that if I was a few years younger, like if I was still in high school and parents were like, okay, well we're going sailing, mm -hmm. I definitely think I would have at the time had reservations and I would have been really upset and annoyed at leaving my friends and leaving school and sport and work and all that normality, but I think now being, I guess, well, I'm older and I'm like looking at all the younger kids and I'm thinking it's so great for them and even seeing the few teenagers that I'm meeting along the way they're just living life so much better and it just seems to be just enjoying life more and getting more out of it than if they were just back and on the hamster wheel at home. It, I think it, it was great just to break out of that fast-paced lifestyle where we were just going from for, you know very early in the morning till late at night, mm -hmm. uh, spending time together, but but so caught up with our own activities. Everyone had their stuff, and you know, and then you you just find that we're always constantly driving around, and um, so you spend the family time you spend together yeah. is it's maybe a little bit a bit more rushed on land. It's um, there's so many distractions. You know, it's. It's just been, this, is, this has been a really good time to get away from the distractions and break away from the fast pace and just live a little, a little slower. We, do, we just don't really know what the future holds, I suppose. We don't know what life looks like back in Australia. Yeah. I think that's the, the thing. So we have to get, get back there and get settled. We've, we've got a few months before the school year starts too. So that'll give us time to work out what, what we need yeah. to do. When does the school start in Australia? In, uh, end of January. Yeah, end of yeah, January. January. Yeah. Yeah. With a special needs child, that's the home environment is a very safe environment. So your schooling set up at home, your social set up is all very well monitored and mm -hmm. it's just, just safe for the child. Um, whereas when you come away, you're breaking, breaking out of that and needing to sort of start over. It's been hard hard for Anne because she's left some really super good friends. And Was that tough for you to to take her into this environment that's not so, home and safe? Yeah, yeah. That, that's been it's been so hard because she's uh, she might find it maybe a little bit more difficult to make friends. Mm -hmm. And I think um, certain certain situations on the boat produce a little bit of anxiety with a special needs kid. We had an, a little issue with our anchor yesterday. Mm -hmm. We were all quietly anxious about it and Emily got really upset about it. 
that was unexpected for me as a parent. I, I just wasn't realising how much of a toll that was taking on her until she let us know. Did so that scare you, Emily? Was yeah. it scary? It was loud, wasn't it? I thought we made that a new boat. boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just need a whole new Maybe boat. Maybe that was hopeful we, thinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mummy would like a new boat too. <laughs> Am's probably the most keen to get back to her friends in Australia. Yeah. But, um, you know, we don't, again, we don't know what that looks like. Her friends mm -hmm. are 16 years old and their, their interests are changing. They're becoming young adults and whether or not Emily wants to do the things that they're doing when she gets back or whether we want her doing the things that, that other 16 year olds are doing is, uh, you know, is, is up for um, yeah. some thought. I, I think we'll, we'll have to just see how that goes. So it's been an amazing experience. Are you, are you happy to have this adventure, Anne? Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate yeah, your, your you uh, time. Yeah. All right. So thanks for watching. Tune in next week as we hopefully do some great diving. Make sure to subscribe if you like our channel. And we look forward to seeing you out there.